you for everyone for joining us. Um, I'm Grace Romney and this is my colleague Graham Cowie from the House of Commons Library. Graham is a constitutional law specialist here at the library and he gives expert advice to MPs and their staff about how this place works. We're talking to you live from inside the UK Parliament. Apologies to anyone who was watching earlier, we had some issues with the sound, hopefully everyone can hear us now, um, so we're going to go again. Um, it's been a really busy week here in Parliament, so we thought we would share some of Graham's expert expertise um, with anyone watching and answer some of your questions about what's been happening in Parliament. We've had loads of questions that have come in, so thank you everyone for sending your questions in. Um, there's been quite a mixture, I think, of questions that are some really complicated, quite complex things and some more general questions. So we're going to start with the more general questions so that everybody watching should be able to understand what we're talking about when we get to the more complicated questions later on. Um, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready if you want. So we'll start with what I hope is something you can answer. Uh, could you tell us, Graham, what is prorogation? So a parliament can last for up to five years under the terms of the Fixed Term Parliament Act, but within that, you don't just have Parliament continuously sitting and dealing with all business for the whole five years. It's subdivided into what we call parliamentary sessions. Like a term. Like a term, if you yeah. like. So normally, but not always, those terms last for about a year. Um, the current parliamentary session has lasted for considerably longer than that. It was planned to be two, but it's lasted somewhat longer even than that. Prorogation is the process by which one term is brought to an end and a new session is then able to begin. Okay. So what happens with prorogation is that you have a, a ceremony in the House of Lords that signifies the, the end of this, this, this session and then all of the business that takes place in both Houses of Parliament is then suspended. Uh, some of it can be carried over by special arrangements but otherwise business is lost and you start fresh with your new session. So when so, you say business, what do you So mean? business, we're let's say a bill is in the middle of going through through Parliament, let's say it's not completed its stages yet, you would need to make special arrangements for that to be carried over okay. into the next session. But in that period of prorogation, so the time between the closing of one session and the start of a new one, parliamentary business can be carried on. So let's talk about select committees for example they can't hold evidence sessions during that period. They wouldn't be formal evidence sessions because they wouldn't be proceedings. Um, they wouldn't be able to take new decisions about whether to publish a report, for example. In normal times, that's not a big deal. Um, prorogation usually only lasts three to four days, and mm -hmm. um, sometimes slightly longer, but not usually much longer than that. So that's it's basically a weekend. It doesn't make a great deal of difference to how they do their business. When it's a longer period, that obviously affects what Parliament can do. It means that neither House can sit. You can't debate and scrutinise the, the government's activities on the floor of the House of Commons. You, you know, if we talk in the context of Brexit, things like scrutiny of preparations for the event of a, of a no deal or indeed for a deal, those things can't be conducted in the same way as they are at the moment. Okay. And in terms of the constituency work that MPs do. If I have an issue and I want to speak to my MP during prorogation, is she available to me? Your MP is your MP until it's no longer your MP. Okay. So when you're elected as a member of parliament, you're then a member for that entire parliament, not just for a session. So until parliament is dissolved for a new election, your MP can do any casework that they were doing before. Um, you, can still, you can still go into their constituency office, email them, call them up, whatever. What, what I suppose might be limited is that they wouldn't be able to ask parliamentary questions while Parliament was prorogued. So they wouldn't be able to, let's say if you had a, 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 an issue about benefits or social security, you might not be able to get them to ask a question on the floor of the House to a government department, but they could still contact them directly to help represent your interests. Thank you. Um, if you're just joining us, we're talking to you live from the House of Commons. This is my colleague Graham Cowie. He's a constitutional law specialist in the House of Commons Library and we're answering your questions about what's happening in Parliament at the moment. Um, so uh, another follow-up question <laughs> on prorogation. Somebody's asked if, can prorogation be reversed or interrupted in any way once it started? So last week on Wednesday, we had a decision formally taken by the Queen but actually, by, on advice from ministers, 
that Parliament should be prorogued the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday of this week. That's, that decision took the form of what's called an order in council, so that's the, the type of legislation that, that it is that, that makes that decision. That could be overturned, if you like, by a, a new order in council, but you would expect that would probably have to come on the initiative of the government telling the Queen Action and we want to change what's going to happen. Okay, so the Queen, just so, so the, the Queen, Queen couldn't just do it automatically, she's kept out of politics very deliberately for that. Another way that you could interrupt prorogation, so the, the order says that we're then prorogued until the 14th of October. If you wanted to come back, let's say for the sake of argument, on the 10th or the, the 6th of October, the government could ask the Queen to issue a proclamation under an old act from the 18th century called the Meeting of Parliaments Act. That requires Parliament to come back earlier than it otherwise would have. Alternatively, and in normal times, you would be able to issue a further order saying that we should be paroled for a longer period of time, so beyond what the original decision was. But Parliament actually passed an act a few weeks ago that means in this particular instance, it would not be possible for the government to do that. That's because we have to come back on or by the 14th of October to debate a report on the formation of a, a new executive or government in Northern Ireland okay. to restore power sharing. So we can't extend it beyond, but we could come back earlier. Okay, thank you. Um, there's been a lot of talk about an um, early election, an mm -hmm. early general election happening um, in the next couple of months. Could you talk us through what the rules are for mm -hmm. an early general election and what would have to happen yeah. for one to take place? So by default, because of the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, which was passed in 2011, the UK has general elections every five years. The next general election always takes place on the first Thursday in May, five years forward from the last election. However, there is also provision in that act for holding an early general election. Um, there might be good reasons for, for wanting to do that. If something in Parliament needs to be resolved, say there's some sort of impasse, then, then we might have an early general election. If you go back to 2017, that's a good example of one of the routes that you can have for that. So Theresa May's government tabled a motion in the House of Commons that there shall be an early parliamentary general election. Um, she said, before the vote, this is when I want to hold it. Um, notice the motion itself doesn't say when you hold it, but you then get a chance to vote on that. Now, two-thirds of the total of the House of Commons has to vote in favour of that. So that's 434 MPs have to vote in favour. It's not enough for a simple majority. Okay. And then if that passes, then a general election is triggered. The date of the poll is set by a proclamation on the advice of the Prime Minister, the uh, Prime Minister recommends the date, okay. and then you have to jump forward 25 days from dissolution, working days from dissolution before the election can take place. So that, that's one of the routes. And just to be clear, dissolution means the kind of... Dissolution is, of yes, it's, it's, it's when, when the entire parliament, like the, 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 the parliament has been cut short, it's come to an end, MPs cease to be MPs, we're into the, into the election period. Okay. So that's one way that you can have an early general election. Notice that the Prime Minister gets effectively to set the election date. The other way is by a, a vote of no confidence route. So we assume it would be the leader of the opposition would table a motion of no confidence. The House of Commons would then vote on that. If it passes by a simple majority, then at midnight, a 14 day period starts, so the clock starts ticking for 14 days. In that 14 days, one of three things could happen. Firstly, the government might regain the confidence of the House, so it might pass a motion of, no com a motion of confidence in itself, okay. saying that we, we've managed to re regain. That might be if they make a, some sort of political concession, the MPs have voted against them. And they've got to change something. In, in, in reality, you would think they would have to change something. Yeah. Alternatively, if it was clear that a, a new government could be formed, then that government might be formed and then bring forward that motion that this House has confidence in Her Majesty's government. So they could then, if you like, cancel okay. the election from being triggered. Or, if neither of those things happen, the third thing, the 14 days expires. At that point, an early general election is triggered, you have to have a, a 
proclamation set on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, okay. who then sets the election date. Notice that second route takes slightly longer because of that 14 days, okay. so the election would have to happen later than would otherwise be the case. But at that point, that's when the 25 working yeah, day it, it would only, In both cases, the 25 working days can only be triggered, if you like, after a proclamation has been made and Parliament dissolves. Okay. Um, so could a general election happen between now and October the 31st, which is the date that we're still due to leave the EU? So, in theory, yes. Um, there was obviously a vote earlier this week about whether there should be an early general election. Uh, a, the, there were more, more MPs who voted in favour of that than voted against, but the, they didn't meet the, the necessary two-thirds threshold. There is a motion on the order paper for Monday, so one of the items of business that might be debated on Monday, to, to try to do that again, but we don't know yet if that will be debated. Okay. If, for the sake of argument, that motion is debated, and let's say for the sake of argument, 434 or more MPs vote in favour of it, then you could have a, a proclamation made Monday evening. You would then have potentially dissolution as early as the beginning of Tuesday. And then the 25 working days would carry forward. That would mean that a general election polling day would take place on the 15th of October. That's okay. Tuesday. Okay, so we'll know on Monday whether or not that motion will be moved. Yes. Okay, interesting. Um, if you're just joining us, we're talking to you live from inside the House of Commons. This is Graham Cowie, he's a constitutional law expert in the House of Commons Library, and we're answering your questions. Um, just it is kind of a follow-on from mm -hmm. what we were just talking about. Um, could you talk a little bit about how governments are formed mm -hmm. and, and the different routes that government can... So I suppose there are two different ways that, that governments might form. Often you'll find that after a general election, if let's say the opposition wins a majority or very obviously is the best place to form a government, the incumbents will go to the Queen the incumbent prime minister will go to the Queen, offer their resignation, and then the other person will be invited to form a government. That's usually based on the, the mandates that the electorate has given them. The other way that you might have a change of government, though, is during a parliament. So if, for whatever reason, it becomes clear that the current government no longer commands the confidence of the House, but that, for whatever political reason, an alternative government could be formed that could effectively govern, that could that could command the confidence of the House. That's more unusual, uh, mainly because of the way that the, the arithmetic is usually quite hard to add up to get all of the opposition parties to, to work together as one yeah. in order to do that. But it can happen. And the expectation would be that once a Prime Minister has lost the confidence of the House and it's clear that someone else is better placed than them, that they should resign and allow that. Um, could you talk to us, what is the Ben Burt bill, which mm -hmm. is passing through, it's in the House of Lords at the moment, mm -hmm. is that yes. the What is this bill actually seeking to do, and what would happen if it passes? So, in order to explain what the Ben Burt bill does, it would be useful to put in context what happened the last, last time a similar bill came forward, back in April. So the cooper Letwin bill essentially instructed the then Prime Minister, Theresa May, to ask for an extension of Article 50 to delay the UK's exit from the European Union. Um, the reason that bill was brought forward is because a lot of MPs don't want the UK to leave without a deal, and there wouldn't have been, in their view, enough time at that point in time to be able to get a deal over the line. Okay. There are obviously others who don't want Brexit to happen at all, they may have also wanted to extend Article 50. Normally, Asking for an extension would be something that the Prime Minister could have full discretion about. They, they would decide for themselves whether they would do that, and they would then negotiate with the European Council, try and get a unanimous decision to agree to that. What Parliament's doing with the Ben Burt bill is to try to find a way to compel the Prime Minister to ask for an extension and to agree to an extension in certain circumstances. So it gives him until, assuming it becomes a law, it gives him until the 19th of October either to get parliamentary approval for a deal, to get parliamentary approval for leaving without a deal, okay. or if he hasn't done either of those things, he then has to ask for a further four-month extension to the end of January 2020. Yeah. Now, 
That's just the beginning. You then have to rely on the European Council saying, yeah, we want to, we want to grant you an extension. So if they offer an extension to the 31st of January, then this bill says that the Prime Minister must, legally must, agree to that extension. It actually says the, the letter that you would have to, to write to ask for the extension, but also you would have to agree to that extension. If they offered a, a shorter or a longer extension, then the Prime Minister has two choices. Either he can just agree to it, um, it perhaps seems unlikely in the current circumstances that the current Prime Minister would willingly agree to an extension in those circumstances, or he has to go back to the House of Commons and ask it, do you want this extension, yes or no? And if the House of Commons says, yes, we want that extension, then the Prime Minister has to go and agree to it. If it doesn't decide to say yes, then the Prime Minister is free to decide what he wants to do next. He could agree to an extension, he could reject it. Okay. And what happens if the European Council don't offer an extension? So it's important to remember that extensions can only happen by unanimity. It's not something the UK can demand yeah. of the European Council. All 27 of the other member states would have to agree, not just that there should be an extension, but how long it should be and what the terms should be. And then the UK would have to decide whether to agree or not agree to it. Okay, thank you. Um, if you're just joining us, we're talking to you live from the House of Commons. Um, this is my colleague, Graham Cowie. I think we've got time for one more question. Mm -hmm. He's answering your questions um, about what's happening in Parliament at the moment. Um, could you just talk to go back to prorogation then? Um, is there time, if, if prorogation is happening, does that affect the no confidence route to a general election? Does that kind of eat up that 14 day period that you talked about? So the decision has already been taken to broke Parliament at some point next week. Let's say for the sake of argument, on Monday we get a, a, vote, on, a, a vote of no confidence. Um, even if that passes, that doesn't stop prorogation from happening. You would still need a, a decision of the government to, to overturn that. So you might find that passes and then straight away Parliament's not sitting for the next 13, 14 days. That obviously then means that MPs won't be able to sit in the House of Commons to debate or pass motions that might indicate whether an alternative government can be formed, for example. That might make it more difficult for them than to avoid an early general election by coming up with an alternative government. They might find other ways of communicating that, saying, you know, a, a letter to the Times, X number of people, uh, uh, MPs would have confidence in a different Prime Minister, but formal proceedings wouldn't be able to happen. That would be within the gift of the government. Okay, thank you so much. That's all the time that we have now for your question, so I'm really sorry if we haven't got to your question yet. What we'll do is go through each one on Twitter and where we can we'll write to you with an answer or point you in the direction of some research um, sure. that will help you find that answer. Um, if you want to find out more about the House of Commons Library, you can follow us on Twitter at, at Commons Library, or you can visit commonslibrary.parliament.uk where we publish all of our impartial research about lots of things, not just Reddit. Um, and you can even sign up to get email alerts with our research about the topics that you're interested in. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you very much, Ryan. Bye.